recording now. All right. So this topic's called relations functions. A relation is a set of ordered pairs of numbers, x, then y. So 4 goes with negative 3, negative 2 goes with 1. And you guys kind of know if we want to graph these, if I want to graph 4, negative 3, I go over 4 and down 3, and I put the point right there. Right? <coughs> and so what you have is a whole bunch of numbers. Okay? Um, the first set of numbers has a name. Okay? And that's called the domain. You got to know there's some vocabulary here, okay? And domain is, that is the first set of numbers, the x values, okay? Or not always x, or the inputs. The input values, the first numbers, the first column, that's what the domain is. That's what you put in to this relation, and the range is usually the y values, the y values, and that's what you get out, the output values, all right? And then, um, so in this case, the domain of this, the domain of this set of numbers, I'm going to erase this over here because it's the domain in this set of numbers would be all the x values. So that would be, and usually you write it like this. So usually you write it like this. So the domain would be, you use these little curvy brackets, four, negative two, Except, see I have two negative ones, you don't have to write that number twice, you just write it once, okay? So the domain is, oh, see I have two fours, I don't have to write that twice. So the domain is really just those three numbers, okay? What's the range? What are the numbers that I can get out? Negative three, one, and what else? There's one other one. Negative two and and one. Okay, and that's the range. And usually you want to arrange those. I didn't do this right here. You want to arrange them from smallest to biggest. So I should have gotten negative two, negative one, and four, negative three, negative two, then. So that's the domain and the range. Done? <coughs> and then they have this idea of a function. Okay? So I'm gonna go down okay, and write a function. A function is a particular type of re a relation, a relation for which there is only one output. For each input. Okay. So, for example, I don't know how to get rid of this bar here, but I'm going to go, can I go down? So, this one up here, I don't think this is a function because you see how if I plug in 4, I get out of negative 3, and then I plug in this 4, and I get out of negative 2. So, this one here is not a function. And uh, there's several ways to tell if something is a function, but one of the ways is using something called the vertical line test. So if I take this table, let's see if I can copy this table. I'm going to copy this table. How am I going to do that? Okay, sorry. A function is a relation for which there is only one output for each of you. Need a little more time to copy that now? And then, uh, so one way you can tell if something is a function or not is if it passes this thing called the vertical line test. So I'm going to 
take a picture of just this part. Um, let's see if I do. And uh, say I wanted to graph this, all right? So I'm going to do an x-axis, y-axis, and uh, I'm going to put the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to graph all these points. So first, this is called the vertical, vertical line test. And what you do with the vertical line test is first you plot the points, 4, negative 3, over 4, down 3, that's right there. That's negative 2, comma 1, that's right there. Negative 1, 3, that's up here. That, um, 4, negative 2, where's that? 4, down 2, and negative 1. Wait, did I do something wrong? Yeah, you did. I did negative 2, 1 wrong, didn't I? That'd be negative two one, and then uh, negative. What's this one? That's four negative two, right? And then add negative one one, negative one one. Okay. Now what the vertical line test says? I'm gonna grab my ruler. Put my ruler. Toolbox. 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 Where's my ruler? Ruler. You see a ruler somewhere? Right there. Oh, there's a rule. Okay. Doesn't matter what that is. Where is it? Okay. Can I rotate this rule? I think I can. So that is vertical. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Okay. So what you do with the vertical line test is you take your ruler, okay, and if any point hits that ruler in two spots, if you hit that two of those points, then it is not a function. See how over here you hit two of those points? Okay? So this thing is not a function because for one x value, you have two y values. Same thing over here. Because it does not pass the vertical line test, then this thing is not a function. Okay? So that's called the vertical line test. So they will say, is this thing a function? And you say, no, doesn't pass the vertical line test. All right? Now, if you, another way to think about a function is as this little function machine, which sometimes they'll call like f of something, f of x, for function of x. So if I plug in a value like 4, what I get out is two different things, right? I can I get out both a negative 3, and what else do I get out? What else do I get out? Look up here, Grant, what else do I get out? Negative 2. So I get two different values. So if I get two different values when I put something in the, my function machine, can I do phone plate or whatever it is? Thank you. Good. Okay. So if I get out two different values, then it is not a function. Huh? So think of it as like a candy machine. If you have, like, the vending machine, if I put in, how much does it cost to get a candy bar down in the cafeteria? Um, they don't have candy. All they have is healthy stuff, right? So how much does it cost to get healthy stuff? Like a dollar. So if I put my dollar in, I pull the lever, and for what can you get out of there? Like granola bars or something? What do they have that's good for you? What? You don't know? You don't buy stuff there? But if I... Juice, okay? So if I... Coconut juice. So say I want coconut juice. If I pull that lever, I expect to get out coconut juice, right? Okay. If I put my dollar in, can I put in other, other than putting in a dollar bill, could I put something else in? Yeah. What could I put in? Like four quarters, right? And if I pull the coconut juice lever, will I still get a coconut juice? Yeah. Probably. Okay. So that's a function, right? Because I can put different things in. I pull the lever, and I get the same thing out. But if I put something in and I pull the lever and I get a random choice of those things that cost a dollar, like I could get coconut juice or I could get a granola bar or I could get gummy, healthy gummy treats or something like that, that is not a function because what I put in, I can get out different things. 
Do you understand the difference? So I could put in things and get out the same thing. I could put in different things and get out the same thing, but I can't put in dip the same thing and get out different things, otherwise it's not a function. So I could have a function machine that looks kind of like this. So if I have a function machine where I put in like, like a negative three and a negative two, and in both cases I get out five, that is a function. Because a negative two spits out a, a five, and a negative three also spits out a five. Okay, so this is a function. This is not a function. And when you grab functions, they pass the vertical line down. For instance, let me just look at a couple more things. So say I have something that looks like, here's a graph, and I have this thing, and I have this thing, and I have a little squiggly thing that looks like this. Is that thing a function? No. Yeah, this is how you tell. Grab your ruler, does it pass the vertical line test? Is there any place where this thing kind of holds back on itself? No. No. So for every x value, how many y values do I have? One, right? Okay, then you say you have another curve that looks something like this. Okay? And I have a little curvy line that looks like this. And I this. Is this thing a function? No. This is not a function because if I were to take my ruler, does it pass the vertical line there? No, because like I can plug in, I can say this is like, uh, say this is like negative three over here, right? And say this is like six. So one place I would get negative three comma six. Another place I might get, say this is negative four. I get negative three comma negative four. So this is not a function. So that's what a function is for everything. When you plug something in, you get out exactly uh, one thing. So let's look at some number values, okay? Let's look at something that looks like this, okay? Here's some points, ordered pairs. Negative three, five, one, zero. Negative three, two, two, zero. Five, negative three. Does this set of points represent a function? Does this set of points represent a function? What do you think? For this x value, how many different y values do I get? Two, right? If I plug in negative three, I could get out both a five and a two. So that is not a function, because when I plug in negative three into my machine, I could get out either a five or a two. You see? Okay. But if I change this, say I change this to a, uh, Say I say change this to a five, and say change this to a five over here. Is this a function? Is that a function? This is a function because I plug in a negative three. Every time I plug something in, I get out exactly one thing. So I plug in negative three, I get out a five. I plug in a one, I get out a zero. I plug in negative three, I get out a five. Plug in a two, I also get out a five. But that's okay because I only get out one thing. You see, so that's a function. That's how you can tell by uh, points. And then, lastly, we have something called function notation, which looks kind of like this. Instead of calling something y, so you've seen, we've seen equations like this: two x plus three, right? So. Another way to write y is f, what happened? f, why did it stop writing? I ran out of ink. f of x equals 2x plus 3. And they'll say something like evaluate. That's a 2. Okay. They'll say something like evaluate f of 2. So that means what is the value of this function when I put in 2 in there. So all you have to do there is put a 2 in there. And what do I get out? What's 2 times 2? Plus 3 is 7. Okay. F of negative 1. Can you tell me what that is? What's F of negative 1? When I plug in negative 1, what do I get out? What do I get out, Britt? 
negative 1, the 2 times negative 1 is, is what? Negative 1 is negative 2 plus 3. <laughs> 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 3 is? Hello? What do I get out? What do I get out? 5. 5? 6. 2 times one. negative 1 plus one. 3. What do I get out? One. Positive 1. Okay. What's f of 0? What? No. 2, two times zero. 0 plus 3. What do I get out? 3. three. Okay. What's f of 6? 2 times? No. 16? 15. Thank you. Do you guys see where we're getting these answers from? Okay, it's just that's called function notation. So if they instead of saying y equals, they say f of x equals, which means that the value that I'm plugging into that function is uh, x. All right, um, and that's about it. So say for this function, the domain, the domain is last thing. Okay. The domain for this function is um, 2. These are the numbers that I can plug in. 2, negative 1, comma, 0, comma, 6. Who can tell me what the range for this function is? What, usually they do brackets that look more like that. What's the values that I get out when I plug in those values? What are the values that I get out? Look up here. What was f of 2? Seven. Okay. What's f of negative one? One. Right. So this is the range. One, three, and fifteen. And you could possibly put those values in a table as well and graph them. Two, comma, seven, negative one, comma, one, uh, zero, comma, three, zero, comma, three, six, comma, fifteen. This actually would make what shape if I were to graph those points? A square. A straight line, which we'll learn about later on as we go. But right now we're just graphing. So this is a function is the value set. There's, there's one output for every input, okay? Um, and, and you have the domain are the x values, the range are the values that you get out or divide out. Okay. Um, let's just look real quick at one more function. Let's say we have a function like uh, f of x, f of x equals the absolute value of x. And say my domain, say I want to plug in these values, make a little table, x, y, boom, 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 boom. Say I plug in negative 3, what do I get out? What's the absolute value of negative three? Three. Three. What's the value, what's the absolute value of zero? What's the absolute value of positive three? Three. What's the absolute value of negative two? Two. What's the absolute value of positive two? Two. Two. So if I were to graph this function, what I end up getting, I plot the point. Zero, zero. Negative two, two. Let's just pretend that this is where it's at. Negative two, two. Positive 2, 2. Uh, negative 3, 3 would be like up here. Positive 3, 3 would be up here. What shape do I end up getting here? Can I graph that? Anyone? What shape does that look like? Kind of, kind of like it's a like a line. We'll discover that. Is. It's more like it's a square. Okay, your homework, which you shall do, is uh, page. 244. It's on my website. Do we, Do we have homework? Yeah. 1 through 15. Odd. Not too many. 17 through 19. That's 10. 23, 25, 27, and 32. Okay, that's 7, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 problems. Okay, Scott. Okay, we have four minutes. What? We have.
Steve out your 